What are your earliest memories of coming here? Four or five years old. How'd you get here? With uh, my granddad's cow. Dogs and all, we travel. Tents, stoves. Everybody brings whatever they got. Mm. Bread, donuts. They used to bring dry muskrats. What they bring, what they made in the springtime and night. And they, Right after the 1st of July, everybody used to leave a clavic. They used to have sports day right on the, where the airfield is now. Used to be old uh, schooners beach there, you know. My granddad had a big uh, red scow, the name of it was Liard Lady, as I remember. And the rest of the people used to have big schooners and that, and they used to go around in the Delta to pick up their relatives and that, and bring them down sometimes three, four families together. And everybody used to travel with their dog teams and everything, because nobody could stay in the Delta to feed them every day. Little <laughs> to the camp and not. there used to be so many tents. If we were the last boat that comes in and we could just see just like snow. So many tents put up at the um, Candle Island already there. There used to be tents right down to the end over here and on this side with families that used to go whaling. That's when everybody shared don't have to buy nothing, nobody stole. They just shared. Don't see that around in much anymore. And we used to be so happy that, because uh, in the winter time we don't visit around because the dogs are only for hunting. So when we all get together and not everybody is happy. And they help each other all the time, nobody's left out. <laughs> เขาเงินเอ่อเคยเจนใจเนี่ยเดี๋ยวจะนําเอาเคยรู้แล้วแต่อาการปังไม่ <laughs> Thank you.
stayed in Kendall Island. Someone always be sitting up on top of the hill to watch out, watch for whales when they come in. And then us kids, we can't even run around, play ball or anything, can't even skip rocks. Because they say that even though whales just got a little pinhole of our ear, they can hear everything what's going on. We couldn't swim till after all the whaling is done. So we had real strict rules some days. Nowadays they can do everything they want. <laughs> a boat coming, but it's coming really slow. How come? Because it has a whale. It has a whale. It has a whale. Isabel. Adriana. Tell me about Whitefish Station. What kinds of things have you learned to do here? Cut fish. Cut muck duck. It's kind of cool seeing whales. What do you like about being here? Making mud castles, going swimming. How many whales is that now for this trip? <laughs> Two. How come they can't go fast? Because they might lose the whale. Oh. Tell me, uh, what does muck tuck taste like? Is it kind of chewy? Yeah. Yeah? And it's fresh. What does it feel like when you got a full belly full of muck tuck? Does it feel good? Yeah. Does it give you lots of energy? Yeah. Mm. How do you like to eat muck tuck? With HP. How about flipper? HP. How about whitefish? HP. Uh, coney? HP. <laughs> Anything else you like about whitefish? Yeah, getting fish out of the fish net. Ah, and then what do you do when you get the fish? You cut the fish. Oh uh, yeah? Oh. Tell me, uh, what, what's hanging up top here? Fish, fish. Yeah, what kind of fish? Um, white fish. Yeah. How can you tell the difference between like a white fish and a coney? Um, above the the mouth and the skin, the mouth, and then the the skin, the skin, like brighter color and darker color. What do you call this type of fish that's hanging here? Dry fish. Oh yeah, and then who cut it? My nana. What's that? Fish. We're gonna cover them up because Seeger's gonna eat it while we're sleeping. They're really bad. Oh, look, I'm scaling the fish.
Long time ago, they used to stay out there maybe two days waiting for whales in the schooner, eh? And they got a slow schooner and they got to wait till the whales come in and make sure they're, they're in shallow and that's the way, make sure they get a whale. They don't just go out there and go home, not like nowadays. When you hit a whale, First thing, this thing comes out like that, eh? So when you stick it in, it comes off and then goes like that in the whale. Right there. Oh, okay. It's tied to jerry can. I used to use uh, round balloons, but we didn't have much room, so we just used jerry cans. And... We don't want to kill the mother and the young one, so we we got to pick out which whale we're going to get. We just go, we can't go there and just kill one because we, we want to preserve the young ones, so we got to look for one that's got no young one. Sometimes we wound them, and then we harpoon them, eh? But a lot of times you, you get young guys that never hunt before, even you tell them where to shoot, they shoot in the right where killing place, and they sink like a rock, eh? You don't have a chance to harpoon them, they're just right now they're gone. Uh, after you harpoon it, you shoot it and kill it. It won't come up. You wait about 10, 15 minutes before it makes you dead. And you pull it up by the harpoon and, and tie rope by the tail and bring it home. But uh, now what we do is just we chase them until we play them out and then... A long time ago, they had kayaks and they, and they had little harpoons and they harpooned the whales with the little sinkers like eh? And the whale go down slow and slow, eh? After they get the whale, they have them guys that Beluga doctors, they punch a hole around the, around by the, by the side, and they blow it, blow the whale, and it, and it floats, eh? and they drag it home that way. We was lucky we, we ran into this one that never makes sharp turns. Some, some of them whales are pretty smart. You go chase them, and then they would stop, and the, they backtrack you right away and you yeah. can circle around. This one just keeps going straight. Right. And we had no time to get it. <laughs> like, I gave them all a chance to shoot at it and uh, to harpoon it. And Jordan went, I gave them two chances to try throw the harpoon. And uh, my grandson, he went the second time. Mm. Boom, I nice. just got it. And, he gave me a big smile and I said, you got it. <laughs> My granddad and them, they used to work all together. Nobody's left out of anything. But they had done that this for everybody, not just for themselves. I think they had to go to the house and go to the house. 
like Kenister, Alba Dolora, my dad, Big Tim, Ayak, and all those guys. Uh, I couldn't let him make now the current, I ain't who put him to talk, uh, you hold to the big gym. The Makata and Mala, you hold the only thing it put Karak by locked over. Nako put Karak by big little. Be here and it put it locked over. Maktahanak be hit to hit him. Near Karpan tap to my anaktip when they do get a whale, they used to put a white flag on their boat pole so that uh, the people could know that uh, they got their whales. So everybody could scream and run and whatever after they see them with a white flag on the pole. Between the red buck. Yeah. Cut the white from top. Let me can see. Wait, we gotta go this way. Wait. What? Bubble, come. No. Bubble. Come on. Give it a hand. Oh, teeth. So you got him with one harpoon shot? Yeah, one throw. Let's see this. Let's see this. Oh, it's just great to work with us. Three. Three, seven. One foot. Three feet. <laughs> Abel, how come you take the jaw out? Uh, research. Just to check if uh, it isn't it's kind of a sickness. But but that's the way she learns, huh? If she stands there and watches mm. her. One time we had a uh, whale here with TB. So we pulled the fisheries and oceans over Baby Island. They came over, they took the test, and they sent it out. It had TB. We, they burned that whole whale, garbage. Burned it up. No good. It had TB in it. When we got the report, it had TB sickness. Mahin, 
Nowadays, the men's cut it up now. It used to be all women's work years ago. But uh, nowadays, the men that uh, knows how to cut it up and not. And they wash it and lay it out on wood or board or anything like that. Then they just leave it like that for a day or two. The women used to have so many of them doing, uh, cutting the whale meat for dry meat, and so many women for cutting all the uh, muktak and washing them and hanging them up. Everybody help. And the younger girls and the teenagers or whatever, and the ladies, old ladies that, um, you know, don't have to work on that. They're the ones that cook and uh, bake bread and everything. And everybody who has uh, time to cook, they used to cook and share all their food. And uh, They used to have big canvas tarp in one place. And everybody bring a little bit of this and that, and everybody eat. They never leave nobody out. We're going to leave this like this overnight. Tomorrow we're going to cut some of the fat off. And we're going to cut the white meat. We're going to cut them, wash them, and we're going to hang them on the poles. A couple days, dry the back of the meat. After two days, we put them back on the table. We cut them up and we, we cook it. Usually when you cut it, you try not to leave meat on. Be nice and clean, that's how you usually are. When you leave meat on, that's lazy. <laughs> you leave just the, just the fat and the white meat. This we throw away. Eat it to seagulls. Yeah. And this fat here, we're going to cut it thinner. And we're going to cut them in skinny pieces. We're going to put them in a 45 and it turns into just like oil. That's to preserve the makta. Yeah. This is the fat from the whale and we'll make oil out of it. Is it oil for burning or oil, oil for... Oil for uh, dipping your makta or caribou meat in and all that. You put it on yeah. your face. <laughs> Have soft skin. One time me and my cousin, we... Ooh. Put some on our oh. face and our hands. We yes. kept it on for about an hour. Yeah, Boy, all summer are just oh. like Look baby's it. bum. So <laughs> soft. Taking that part, uh, we're gonna make that full jerky. We're gonna let it uh, drain the blood off it, mm -hmm. and we're gonna cut it up and hang them up and make mipko, whale dry meat, really good in uh, when it's in with the muktak, really good. As long as they make hot water outside, up here. Oh, I'd say that clean when you're cutting mustard, you get a, yeah. a sharp we'll tool of color. We're gonna use it. And what is it that you're holding right now? Uh, ulu. Thank you. That's a Ulu. That's a Ulu. That's a Ulu. Nice. Take a sharp little cut of mustard. 
Easy. But my job is cutting. Yeah, keep it in the sharp. You can have a lot of fun in my old woman working. 80 year, 83 year old woman working. <laughs> How many whales did they say they got yesterday? Seven. Seven. He harvested seven for Kuna. Balloon with a stomach. <laughs> stomach? Yeah, stomach. Okay, you could blow it loose, know how? Do you know how to do it, Alois? I made about three balloons, I think, since I started. Long ago, people used to use it to store their muck duck or their berries and add in it. Yeah. Nowadays, people don't. We just blow it up for, just, just for show, I guess. We're gonna cut up that flipper. And then we're gonna put it in 45. I'm with sick the of fat, yeah. cut the fat in small pieces. And then we're gonna, like, ferment it. Age it. Oh, it's the best. Better than regular matcha. How long do you ferment it for? You'll know when it starts changing color and people sometimes, some people like theirs, like the elders really like their, it's called wheelock, aged flipper. Some people like it really green and stink. Yeah. Different with everybody. Yeah. Me too, I like it real stink. <laughs> Okay, number one, you get ulu and you gotta cut cut them in small pieces so it'll be easier to cook. That way if you cut them too big of a pieces, it takes long too long to cook. So you put them in water. And you gotta cook it very slow. Uh, keep steering it. And you basically eat the old parts? Lots of people take the 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 fat off, take the skin off, and they eat it okay. With each piece of sauce or soy sauce or ketchup or whatever. If you cook it too too fast, it'll be like rubber, eh? And you eat all that you all it nice and soft. Okay, the hulu the blade is from the skill saw blade. It's an oval round shape, so I cut it, cut it to shape. I got, I made another little piece here for the, where I put it, tack it onto the wood, and the wood is uh, hardwood, eh? And I, I use screws here so it won't come, uh, come loose, eh? And I gotta sharpen it. It takes about four hours to one hula to complete. And long time ago, um, how do uh, people cut whales before there was metal? Well, that's about hundred years ago. They used to use, uh, you know, the flat stone, and uh, you see, pretty big too. You can cut. They got to sharp. They sharp, and that's where they cut them. Eh? 
He's cooking good. My mother can have a good meal after. I <laughs> she There's several ways I like uh, cooked and uh, the uh, <clears throat> some uh, sometimes uh, I used to see the elders they they age it they put some of the whale flippers and heads into the ice houses uh, you know the mm. ice houses that we dig into the ground they they're, uh, <coughs> they freeze slowly in there, so, and then they get that, My was like that special so taste, eh? You know, I had the local ice house in, in Taktiaktak, uh, built many years ago. And it's for people in the community to keep their food from, uh, to help preserve their food. It goes down about 40 feet down. I think there's about three three arms to it and just about everybody in the community has one little part of the of the ice house. See there good bite sized pieces. We got uh, right now we got a couple of tubs on the go. They're all boiling right now. Oh, great, huh? Just waiting for them to you know maybe a couple of hours of of a boil and until they get soft like like this. Yeah. So you just boil it in water, pretty straightforward, eh? Well, it tastes like cooking potatoes, but it uh, takes longer. Eh? <laughs> What's your favorite part of the, the muck tuck to eat? You like? When you start putting it in a can, all cooked and done. <laughs> But uh, a lot of people say that when we use plastic bags and that, just, I mean, um, pails, mm. they say that just like the muck that spoil is faster than staying in a can. Mm. I don't know why, but yeah, plastic sounds maybe fine. the chemical in the, yeah. the plastic or something like that. Mm. I really don't know. But, but once we get it all done and that, we put them in a deep freezer and keep it in there, frozen, till we need it. Kama un naki vajjane uglipak hilya alla nga khani. Daimangali jitchakai lakana kama tamakkwat nunani khan ukiwit makkwat alla nga khai nakrut mikliha nakrut chichuk pailitu ngay. Tamakat Mandala cook Ikagli in the honey, Ikalawa, Agli in the honey. The Hilaratun Pingakat, Ikalawa Mana, Agli and Yaki, Kagli and Yakon. Tamakolo, uh, Kakatan Makat, Sisu Kalakat, uh, I shall do the Mara Makat, Pikani talk, Hagelok. It's just eroding, even back here behind uh, Baby Island. All over, it's just slowly sinking, I think. Mm -hmm. And everything, all the channels, just like they get uh, real shallow. Mm -hmm. Long ago, the water was so deep and not they used to travel in a place. Now, if you had a schooner, you wouldn't go around the bend and you'd be grounded. <laughs> we get bigger storms in the fall, that's how come we got to move the house again. Long ago there used to be ice sometimes all summer in the ocean. From Tuck to across to Saxon up there always was ice. They say that when North Star is gonna come it crosses in August when the ice starts shifting here and there so they could always have a trail. But there was always ice in the ocean every summer, no matter where you are. Now there's nothing. I 
and everybody used to stay in tents. Mm. I don't know if they have a different lifestyle. It, 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 some kids, they don't have a way of coming down to the whale camp, and that, and that, I guess that's the reason that we, they do the summer whale camp, uh, is to give the kids opportunity to come down to the whale camp and see what we do out here. And, uh, you know, just to learn, our, try to pass on, our, pass on our tradition and try to make it a, you know, easy as possible for them, for them to get to make that transition too. Oh yeah, it's 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 a real big difference. For for me and I growing up, it was a you know really slow pace like thing. The old timers were always patient and what they did, and they never rushed at anything they did. It was always a, it took time to prepare everything for for their winter supply of food. Eh? So it, it's a, I'm there. Us us younger generation learn how to be patient, and you know it's a. It's a gift that's, that's, that's real good to, to have. Because if you don't be patient, you're going to get hurt along the way somewhere. And that, that's, uh, that's, you know, if you, if you try to do things too fast, and it could be dangerous for you. Eh? You know, you might get hurt or something. So you got to be patient. Well, some of the challenges is... is for, uh, I don't know, for the young... young, young Young people nowadays, the challenges are the, the, you know, I see it, you know, as I see it anyway, is, is they're going to have a tough time, uh, you know, just to learn how to do the things we've done. Because if they, you know, us back then, we were willing to learn. I don't know, nowadays, it's, it's the few the few that's going to learn. Eh? And then, you know, I'm just hoping that, that they take it more to heart, that, you know, these things are for real. They're not. They're not just for. You know, just go one, go to a camp here and go to a camp there, and and you say you travel to Kendall Island. It's, it's more to it than that. It's it's lots of preparation. Lots of planning to make that trip. You know, nowadays the gas prices are up, the food prices are up, so you have to plan that, all that kind of stuff. And how long you're going to be down at your whaling camp? You have to plan for how long you're going to be there. And you know it's a it's a lot of planning and a lot of a lot of money there to come down this way. But it it you know money is not a when you want to come down to a whaling camp it, it's it's not a not a real issue if you if you if you like coming out to hunt. Eh? You know it's 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 a it's a tradition that that needs to be to be taught in our schools and you know our elders got to teach it more. I think that's a, you know, it's a big, it's a real good tool to start it at the schools. So that's that's a number one priority right there. Okay. Well, tradition for me is a, is a, is a real gift there. For 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 me, it was a real gift because you know I know how to do all the all the stuff that my granddad and my dad taught me how to do, and you know it's a. It's how to prepare your meat, how to prepare your your blubber, your muktuk, 
your anything that you hunt, it's you just you just how to learn to pre how how to prepare it. Especially in the summertime, this this time of year, you you know the food can go bad pretty quick, eh? So if if uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to do it, it, it it's going to be dangerous for you because you might make your food might turn into poison or something. So that that's a danger in it. If they don't learn that, then they're gonna that, that's where they're. Uh, it's, it's, it's no good for them. Oh yeah, it is. It is in a way, but uh, you know, in, in in anything, we have to change with time. Eh? Yeah. But we still got to keep that tradition going. That that's just a. Even though we change with time, we still got to keep try to keep that tradition going. And, and that's what and that's what we're trying to do here is trying to keep that tradition going to teach young guys or young people or young kids how to you know how to whale and that, and that's a, and it, it just don't happen overnight for us it's, it's a long process you know we come down here at a, a young age and by time by the time we turn 12 or 15 or something like that that that's when you know that's when uh, you learn that much, and, and and it's going to be your turn to do that. So, you know, it's it's always changing. It's always changing hands. Eh? So that that's what I'm trying to do. Is trying to change hands with with my grandchildren, and and who knows all the other kids that are are there with them. They they learn that that process too. Education is is a is a number one. If you if you don't finish your education, you're not gonna get a good job to get the boat you want to go, go come whaling or get the skidoo you want to go hunting and keep your tradition going. So that, uh, you know, just stay in school and you'll get all the toys you need later on. Well, I, I think that uh, for the kids, for the younger generations of days, it is, is that they just keep on trying to learn Trying to learn your church tradition, try to keep it going. I mean, we're the ones that's we're the ones that's going to try to pass it on to them, and the ones that are willing to learn it and you know keep that tradition going. And it's I think it's a really important thing. But first of all, you have to finish your education first, and you can do the tradition all you want after. So that's uh, how I see it anyway. Win yet, but not too bad. Yeah, no more white cap. No, that's good. It's not raining, it's good though. Yeah, it's not raining, it's good. Today. Good to travel. Nice to be waking up in the bush over. Yeah, pal. Nice beluga. Oh, go get your whale. One old man, he always told me, when you're traveling, he said, make sure you have knife in your pocket. Now we'll go hungry, he said. You see something you like to eat, grab it out of your pocket. Cut a piece. Mm. Put your knife back in your pocket and don't let it to nobody. What can you do? What can Could you really shop the butter? No. I'm waiting for my job. Oh yeah. And show a little handle. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's yeah. doing a little tourist here. Hey fish boy, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out how to take them off that net. <laughs> 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 